the number four team in the country. It can only last so long. So now the focus has to be on the next 40 minutes. And board leaders, you've got to control the glass this evening on both ends. This team needs more second chances, and they've got to extend their offensive possessions. The Vaqueros in the road orange. King State in the home whites were underway from Bramwich Coliseum for the second straight night. A different look for the starting five for K-State. We'll get to that in just a moment. Some size for this Vaccaro team. So Lauterbach getting the call to begin for K-State inside. Unable to get the rebound. And Eliza Moppet, the freshman, getting her first start. Defending on the wing here. Couldn't get the rebound, but K-State is rolling the other way. And here is that aforementioned K-State starting five. You said looks a little bit different for Kansas State tonight, and part of that is because not only size, but this is a UTRGV team that is going to shoot a lot of threes, and you don't give them an opportunity to drive and dish. That's because you're taking up that space in the lane. This Kansas State team really is going to have to focus one on one defensively. You got to be stoppers. And Haley Jones comes from Wichita, Kansas, the junior, one of the returners for this. The Carroll's team, six returners, six junior college transfers, two other transfers, and one freshman. That makes up this lineup. They're young, so they're still, Glenn gets 21 plus, even though she was in foul trouble. So a lot of minutes logged by some of those key players for the Wildcats. Other faces, other minutes can be distributed tonight. Well, good practice for next week. Kansas State will go to the Paradise Jam of the Virgin Islands and play three games in three days. Jones on the drive. Has all four. Of course, Iowa to have to guard you one on one. They've got to continue that trend tonight. It's worse than some success has been happening. Shimatsi. And that's what you'll see is a lot of deep threes and long rebounds on misses. And so you've got to be able to block out. You do not want to give up those long rebounds and second chance opportunities. Jalen Gwen to the basket last night as well. So it's not just physical fatigue. <laughs> Stewart of it misses a three. Oh, of eight. Yeah, the Vicaros just can't buy one from behind the three point line, giving themselves good looks. Dorsey wanted to get weight underneath the basket. Late pass goes to McGarity, and she's flustered on the shot. Yeah, love the look. It was great execution as the shot clock, or as the game clock was going down. But now Kansas State making them. What do you think about Jeff Mitty leaving Heavenly Greer in? She made the foul on the offensive charge, a player go, and sometimes you'll see a player get taken out. In this case, left in kind of a repeat, going back to her. Yeah, you got to kind of play through it a little bit, and I think didn't get a lot of minutes last night. She's probably, this can be a good matchup and good lineups where she could get some reps, get some opportunity to find that confidence factor, really different than what she was exposed to at Oklahoma. So and you, the first year learn, here. Yeah. Absolutely. So you've got to learn all. All of those inter in intricacies of what's happening both on and off the floor. Final 10 seconds of the quarter. And a nice finish for Jenny. All the way there, but they did kind of sleepwalk their way to a 19-9 lead. Yeah, was it the best outing in that first half? Casey Kyle able to split a double team, but K-State does force the turnover. Gregory finishes the other end. A lot of space to be able to shoot that basketball. If you can get your feet set with confidence, that's where shooters love to be. It's a great position for a player like her. This three goes in for Gregory. That was off a screen and a fill. Just getting her feet set, but then just not Williams not being able to knock down that shot from the top of the key. Glenn. Slow, but that rebound factor, coming focused, being ready to play, that's critical here tonight. And they brought that with their defensive pressure and getting this RGV team out of their system. Tremendous rotation help there from Moppin. Glenn pulls up and hits it. Jones. Didn't have much spin on that shot. The rebound to Moffitt. You had two shooters over there on that right wing. It was Jones and Dorsey. Either one was looking for the three. Jones couldn't get it to go. Waterbach in a quick rotation. Over four style. Here. You need just a couple breaks to go your way. Get a couple stops, be able to find yourself some easy buckets. Maybe that's out in transition. Create some offense with your defense. But right out of the gate, Jalen Glenn. Sundell a little flat with that shot. Sundell's had a tough start to the year shooting long distance shots. She is just 3 of 19. 
from behind the arc. And that's a confidence factor, but the one thing I do like from the sophomore is the fact that she's not settling, so that you've got to find other ways to score. She knew it last night, and we've seen it here tonight. Mm -hmm. and gets lost defensively, but that's a heads-up play by the Vaqueros. You've got to keep that dribble alive. When you stop moving, you're easy to guard. Cuts to the rim, cuts to the basket, gets you easy buckets. Shamatsi slipping the screen, doubled. Wide open Gregory. Nothing but net. Finding some rhythm herself from behind the three-point line tonight as Gabby Gregory didn't have it last night against the Hawkeyes, didn't need it. But tonight, being able to get her feet set and knock down three is a huge lift for this Kansas State offense. Trailing the play, Jones, the answer. The squad's trying to find a little bit more rhythm, and it seems as though the Vaqueros finding some energy and rhythm coming with their defense, kind of building themselves up a little bit. K-State themselves more methodical here in their offensive execution on this end, looking to find that rhythm as well. So Matsy nearly lost it out of bounds. Briley Glenn, top of the circle! And three comes from Serena Sendell because she made the next pass from that opposite wing. It was a quick ball reversal, and Briley Glenn's got her feet set. That all happens because of the sophomore point guard. Sundell coming into play today, second in the league in assists. And finally, the Vaquero starting to hit those outside shots. Casey Kyle, her first. The answer by Gregory, right back at you. Quarter three, that is in and out. All but down for Kailahi. Sundell running, left hand layup. Sundell's got Glenn to her right. Riley pulls up in transition, just off the iron. Offensive board for Sundell. Gregory posting up, back to Serena. What a layup. Rated player in Missouri, averaging 15.3 points a game. And Eliza said, I want to improve my game, improve my communication, and be a leader where I can be as a freshman. But her big goal this year is to just have fun. Well, winning is fun. Absolutely. And the Cats are doing that. Lauterbach. How do you pull finish on the left side there? Well, and Moppet's given this team about 13 and a half minutes here so far tonight in the starting lineup. And as you said it, it's that raw athleticism that I think she brings to the floor. You've got to find a way to harness that. And as we said earlier, we were talking about Lauterbach, who just made a great move on the other end. Minutes are going to come for these players as they realize what that role is. It's going to be rebounding and, de and defense to start. You can't force things. You've got to allow this offense to flow within. Team offense, team execution, that's critical for the Cats. Well, K-State Road sitting a lot of different players in today. A lot of different lineups. Kyle getting her second three-pointer of the ball game there. Nice inside-outside flow by UTRGV. Glenn driving, throwing it up at the window and scoring. We see Heidrich, Jasmine Halliburton all with you from Moramich Coliseum. Second game in as many nights for K-State after their epic upset of fourth-ranked Iowa last night. Caros, who came in second in the whack in three-point shooting, just 5 of 31 from behind the arc, 16%. Wide open for Jalen Glenn. That is true. Well, she doesn't try to do too much. There's been a few possessions we've seen where it might get a, sped up a little bit, but for the most part, she plays very much in control and taking what the defense gives her. Big 12 leader in steals has won tonight. 13 points. Of the two Glenn twins, she was the more highly rated top 50 player. Three rattled in. Shortens up that bench just a little bit. 11 strong for the Wildcats. As Missy pointed out, all 11 have played early and often. Glenn. Sell some open looks from the perimeter. Just not as many have been able to go in tonight. Initially to begin this half had done a good job of attacking the basket, yeah. but now suddenly back more for the threes Well, I think we saw that from their energy Defensively it was a little bit trying to create some offense with your defense and they were able to do that early But then sometimes you can settle in and you can kind of fall back into those habits Great find off it to Everett returner some new ones really only one true freshman and that has been O'Keefe Charlotte O'Keefe coming actually from Overland Park Kansas. She's a native of Kansas. But a young a young group continuing to learn and mesh and find out about themselves just as Kansas State has been as well. No matter how many minutes you get, it goes back to what we were talking about before. You've got to impact that game. You've got to figure out a way to make your presence known. 
And whether that's just finding some energy, being quick on defense, being in the right position, all of those things make a difference when the push comes to shove. I think you mentioned for Mobile Park. Collinger all the way to the basket. Not able to get the friendly roll. And I like O'Keefe's size. I think she's learning, understanding the pace of play. We know, especially for post players, it's so different to understand the physicality and what you have to be able to do. Ball program there in Overland Park, but now two players in Division One, Trying to figure out again that pace of play and the physicality. It takes a little bit of time, but both coming into their own. Long three for Williams. Not necessarily about maybe as much as happened on the floor, but what happens, as we said, making the adjustments, whether that's out of timeouts, whether that's coming out of halftime, but I think really just the mental side of this is being able to get yourself focused and be ready to play. Not having a huge letdown coming off that. Beating the number four team in the country, it changes things. Parks reads the entry feed, lays it in. So back-to-back -back plays there for Parks, a wonderful assist to Greer and then the steal and score. And the high flying Wildcats, who have averaged 81 a game, get the 70. Good move by O'Keefe. And the Vaqueros will fall to 2-2, two and two and they get Kansas, as Missy mentioned earlier, on Sunday. In Lawrence. Casey Kyle unable to finish.